Hello everybody, in this video series I'm going to be showing you how I made this Rubo workbench. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Rubo Workbench series. For those of you that are new here, thank you for clicking on the video, it is great to have you on board. Be sure to subscribe to get latest updates on whatever it is I'm doing. For those of you that have already been here and previously been watching my videos, hello again, it is great to still have you here, I'm glad I haven't lost you yet. So a Rubo Workbench. I've been wanting to make one of these for a good four years now, but never had the time, reason or resources to be able to make one. This opportunity to make it actually came in the form of the dissertation which you write in your third year at Rikerwood. The dissertation can be based upon anything to do with furniture making as long as it's relevant. And I started doing videos a few months before starting the third year and I decided to do my dissertation based upon social media. Now this links into the workbench in two ways. Firstly, Shop projects, very popular on YouTube. We seem, as woodworkers, we seem to be more interested in making our shop look nice than our house. Which is fair enough, because you probably end up spending more time in there at the end of the day. And the second reason is, if I'm to continue content creation in the future, I actually need a workbench to work on. So I thought, if I'm going to make a workbench, I am going to bloody make a workbench. Hence the Rubo style, hence the amount of timber, hence all the fancy joints and everything that I've used on it. It's going to be something I'm looking at for the rest of my life and I want that to be an enjoyable aesthetic. If that's even a phrase that makes sense. So anyway, I'm blabbering on as I usually do. What you saw in the previous frames was firstly the delivery that I got from Tyler Hardwoods which was the sawmill I used to get all the timber from. All of that timber was picked by myself so I was able to get a good colour match, I was able to get a good grey match and basically have everything under my control rather than relying on someone at the sawmill picking it for me. And then after receiving it, I took it into the corridor and get everything labelled up finally so I could work out exactly the material that I had, which I was right up to the line with, I had nothing left over. I sort of accounted for a little bit of extra waste, but there was nothing, so I was incredibly lucky with that. And here you see me cutting the legs for the workbench, which was well oversized, and this is so I could accommodate for any uh, problems underneath the rough sawn finish or the painted ends of the board, and just give me a little bit of extra wiggle room later on. And this is the rough material for the tongue and groove slats on the bottom of the workbench. I chose tongue and groove just because it fit the general aesthetic of the bench. It's strong, you can accommodate for wood movement, and was worth the extra effort in the end result. And then after getting that cut all to rough length, I got them cut to rough width on the rip saw. Again, this was slightly oversized to give me room to machine them down later on. Now this was the most knackering part of the entire project. Good job I could get it out of the way early. Shoving these bits over the planer, not only because of the weight of them, but also the overall length of them, meant that there was a lot of torque applied to your spine when you were lifting it from the outfeed bed back onto the infeed bed continuously, trying to get it flat. Luckily they were relatively straight but there was the odd one that just sort of curled up like a banana and it took quite a bit of flattening as you saw on that bit there. But my overall goal here was just to simply get a flat face and a square edge to that flat face. Now I was going to try and work some of my editing magic here and lip sync what I was saying here. I actually ended up losing the audio but essentially what I was saying is Instead of t then taking all of those components to the thicknesser, having all these variable widths and stuff that I have to try and tackle and get down to a uniform width, if you take them to the rip saw, put that face edge against the fence, rip them all through there, you get them all down to a uniform thickness, in this case it was 122 millimeters, and then that way I only had to take off two millimeters on the thicknesser, as opposed to trying to tackle some components that are 122, others that are 136, 
you know, if you put them all through the ripsaw, it takes them all uniform, and then you have minimal work to do later. I say minimal, look at the amount of components there. Now I don't know how many of you who are watching this aren't woodworkers, essentially what a thicknesser does is get the bottom face going along that bed parallel to the top face. So you can see the cutter block taking away about a millimetre of material there and that makes both edges parallel. You do this on both that edge and the opposite face and then you get a lovely square bit of timber. got all the stuff thicknessed up and I thought I'd take this point to say how important it is that all of these are thicknessed at exactly the same size as the legs. Now these middle components here, the 50mm ones, aren't really that important. As long as they're 50mm and they match the drawing, that's fine. These ones, in order for that joint to work, going from the leg to the top, they all have to be finished at exactly the same size on the thicknesser but without moving that bed. So that means this one is exactly the same as that. This one's the same as that, this one's the same as that. So that means that there's going to be no little hairline gaps or anything between each of those layers. It's all going to fit together absolutely perfectly, um, or at least we hope so. So with everything machined up, now is the opportunity to get all of the lovely grain visible at the front and all of the not so lovely grain hidden in the final few layers of the workbench towards the back or sandwiched between the two nice layers on the workbench legs or hidden on the back legs, various ways of hiding it but essentially what I was looking for here was uniform grain that was visible and uniform colour. So these are the two bits of wood that I chose to be on the face of the legs. As you can see they look very similar, almost book matched however they are not. The main idea I was looking for here was to get the fatter grain towards the inside of the legs and then tapering out to tighter grain on the outside. I also translated this to the front layer on the top of the workbench so it was sort of fatter grain on the underside and then it was tapering up to thinner grain towards the top of the workbench. Subtle things like this make all the difference in the final piece and it's something that I've become incredibly anal about. And on the subject of grain selection this is the other thing I did. I orientated all the grain so that if I was to ever need to plane the workbench flat all the grain was going in the same way. Wood has a direction that it prefers to be planed in. Think of it like a cat, not planing a cat, think of it like stroking a cat. If you stroke a cat one way, it looks at you lovingly and gives you a nice purr. If you stroke it the opposite way, it looks at you questionably and probably ends up scratching your face out. Wood obviously doesn't do this, but it does produce tear out, which is incredibly difficult to repair without having to take massive dips out of it via sanding or with scraping. So it's much easier if I orientate all the grain so it's in the same direction and then it's less fat later on. And after numbering all of the components, I was able to cut all of those ends off that were either labelled thick or were painted at the sawmill or cut off any disgusting grain that was then and basically get those ends relatively uniform. Ideally I would have done this on the panel saw but it was being taken up at this point so I decided to do this on the radial arm saw. It's something that I'll be cleaning up later on in the project anyway but at this point I just needed a relatively flat reference point to work off. And that is it for this video. Thank you ever so much for watching, those of you that are new here or those of you that have been watching since day one. The next video will be focused on the legs, so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to get the latest updates on when that's uploaded. Also, I'm on many other social media platforms, so a follow on there would be greatly appreciated. Thank you ever so much, and I'll see you in the next video.